today's video I have something special for you guys I have had the Samsung s21 ultra for about a week now and honestly I'm thinking about making this phone my daily driver here it is you guys here it is this is the final review of my Samsung s21 ultra let's talk about it getting straight into the review you guys this phone here uh, I would say this is a game changer. And the reason that this is a game changer because it's the first time Samsung has released a phone that has actually made me contemplate getting rid of my iPhone. First off, I'm talking about the display. 6.8 inches, 1500 nits. When I'm talking about the nits, I'm referring to how bright the back panel of the display is going to be. And we should honestly be accustomed to that because Samsung is known for the brightness of their back panels. And the S21 Ultra doesn't fall short from perfection. Using this phone as my daily driver since I released that unboxing video, I have been nonstop putting the phone through all of its paces, you guys. I've been using this phone, if not more, than my iPhone 12 Pro. And like I said, I am impressed. The display is amazing. Samsung allowed us the opportunity to have more control over our refresh rate when you go into the settings and change it. I have been using this phone on 120 hertz. You don't get that stuttering that you would with a phone that has a lower refresh rate. When I'm switching through Instagram or if I'm scrolling through Twitter, everything is smooth and seamless. And to the naked eye, it's something that you wouldn't notice, but to me, someone who is reviewing this phone and using this phone, testing out all of the tech that I can in it, I'm really impressed with what 120 hertz looks like. And I know if that's a feature that you guys are curious about, it's something that I'm really excited about and something that is really nice to use. And I know a lot of people say that they can't tell the difference with the 100 and 20 hertz display but when you're scrolling through Twitter when you're scrolling through anything if you're reading an email it definitely plays a part in making your display look much more smooth and much more seamless the Snapdragon 888 processor allows the Samsung s21 ultra to be as fast as impressive as it is opening and closing apps playing Call of Duty on this phone switching between twitch then going to send an email everything is quick at the blink of an eye and that is due to this new Snapdragon 888 processor. And I'm super excited that I got to compare this phone versus my iPhone, just opening a few apps, doing things that I would normally do every day. Not only is the CPU contributing to how fast the new phone is, but also the RAM. Depending on the model, you can have 12 gigabytes of RAM or you can have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And what that means, it's just helping your phone perform the tasks that you want it to perform even faster and multitask while you're doing your day-to-day -day activities. Activities. And as someone that works from home and uses my phone constantly, checking between YouTube, going to YouTube studio, um, opening this phone specifically to take pictures, videos, um, use the pro model of the camera, so many things that are heavy on your CPU makes it so easy easy when you're using the S21 Ultra. And again, I'm just talking about these really techie aspects of the phone because they play a big part when you're talking about how practical a phone is. Um, and I really like that this phone's processor and the RAM combined, they make the user experience with the phone really nice and really pleasant. On paper, the battery life is 5,000 milliamps and you should get up to 16 hours of constant use on the phone with the new Samsung S21 Ultra. And I tested that out. Um, I will have to say my battery life is a little bit better than that compared to what it says on paper with that 5,000 milliamp battery. I wanted to put the phone's battery life to the test, so I woke up one day, charged it to 100%, and did my normal routine like I normally do when I'm working from home. But instead of watching Nick Merckx on my computer, I set the phone up on my work laptop and I had Nick Merckx playing from about 1 p.m. all the way until 5 p.m. Again, with my phone all the way up to the maximum brightness 
and having that 120 hertz refresh rate on. And I have to say, I didn't have to charge the phone until 10.35 p.m. And I would say that that's really impressive because not only did I have Twitch open in the background, I was still checking my YouTube channel. I was still replying to comments to you guys. I was still on Twitter. I was still on Instagram talking to my editors, everything. And this phone, not only did it do all those tasks, it did them in a blink of an eye. So you guys, if you're worried about the battery life, if you're a commuter, whatever you're using this phone for, um, that 5,000 milliamp battery life is definitely going to be more than you need to get your phone from 8 a.m. probably to 9 p.m. at night, and if some, before you need to even plug it into a charger. And to say that I am impressed by that, you guys, I don't know. I just feel like I'm hyping up this S21 Ultra, but it's so practical. It does everything that you guys need it to do in a phone and more. And I haven't even started talking about the camera. When it comes to the camera, I am not a big fan of the actual design. I am not a big fan of the camera housing. I don't like how when you sit it on a table, it rocks. But when it comes to the camera quality, I have to say Samsung did a really, really nice job. There are a few things about the actual photos that I don't like, but mainly I was using this phone for video purposes. And as you guys saw in the beginning of the video with the intro everything was filmed on this s21 ultra and with the 8k mode even though a lot of devices don't even support 8k it's just nice to see that that is something that we're looking forward to for the future of cell phones now if we take a look at the samsung phone we have the three cameras here you're gonna have that 12 megapixel wide lens and then you're gonna have two telephoto 10 megapixel lenses and you're gonna get three times optical zoom and 10 times optical zoom and that is super impressive. I'm not zooming into anything more than 10 times because at that point you're getting, you're going to be getting a lot of distortion in your image, but it is something fun to play around with. And it's really fun that the phone has it. The video quality on the S21 Ultra is the most impressive part about this phone um, other than the display. And like I said, everything that was the intro part of this video was shot on the S21. And I love that Samsung gives you so many options when it comes to taking control of your footage. You can go into the settings and change just about anything you want when it comes to the camera and when it comes to recording video. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, you do have an 8K option, but you have so many other options. You have the pro mode, you can shoot in raw, you can put a grid up, everything that you want. You really don't even need, I don't, don't even need this DSLR camera in front of me. That is how good that this camera is. And for the average person, the average family person, the parent, the mom, the sister, the student, everyone, they're not looking to get really, really, really crazy with the video settings. But for those people who are like me, for the tech people out there, I have to say that it is a viable option. This phone's camera is so good. You could shoot a short little documentary on it, or you could just capture those moments with your son or your daughter or whoever, or take pictures or take videos of your dog, things like that. The phone has it all. At this point in the video, you guys are probably probably thinking, Saray, you talked about so many features that this phone has, but you haven't even talked about the actual design of the phone. I know you guys, I know. I'm saving the best, 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 three best, for last, I really love the display and the body of the phone. At first, when I opened it, I thought that this was not glass. I thought this was a complete aluminum body. But after doing more research, I found out that Samsung did put this phone in complete glass. But instead of going for that shiny finish that they had on the previous S models, they went with this frosted glass. And I am a huge fan of the frosted back glass because it's matte, it's classy, it looks pretty pro to me, um, leave a comment down below and let me know how, what do you guys think. And I hope Samsung keeps this frosted glass colorway with their flagship phones in the future because it's something that looks so much nicer and so much more aesthetic compared to that shiny glass back that they had with the previous model. That is it, you guys. We are at the end of my review. I went through everything. I went through the processor, the camera, the display, the body, everything. This phone is so versatile 
versatile. At first, I did not like how big it is, but with the phone being 6.8 inches on the display, um, the width of it, I don't know. It's not as bad. It doesn't hurt my hands as much as my iPhone, so I feel like it's a little more ergonomic. And I just, again, you guys, I don't have any complaints. Uh, for the first flagship phone of the year, I have to say that anyone putting out anything after this, they have a huge, huge, huge shoe to fill because I have to give it to Samsung. Um, this right now, this is a smartphone to beat. Uh, sound off in the comments below. Definitely leave a like on this video. Tell me what you guys liked about it. Tell me what you guys didn't like about it. And as always, hit that subscribe button if you like this tech content. I will see you guys in the next video.